Hi, we're here with Athena Vidaki. Athena, why don't you tell us a little bit about your work here? Hi, Laura. It's Hi. Uh, great to be here. Um, so I'm a, a postdoctoral researcher at the Erasmus Medical Center in the Netherlands. And I have been specializing over the last eight years on forensic genetics, but more specifically on forensic epigenetics. Tell us about epigenetics. That's fairly new. What is that? Yes, so epigenetics is actually one of the, uh, the most novel markers uh, that has been used in uh, forensics over the last few years. Uh, so epigenetics is uh, more, um, it's, it's quite different than the genetics, which is just looking at the sequencing itself. Okay. In epigenetics, we look at the chemical modifications of the DNA and uh, how these change uh, over someone's lifetime, depending on the environment and various lifestyle factors. That's very interesting. How is that used in forensics? So actually the first publication uh, proposing forensic epigenetic biomarkers was in 2011 and uh, this uh, involved its use in forensic tissue identification. So how can we say if a tissue is semen or blood or saliva? But uh, definitely a very hot topic is the age prediction. So uh, people have used uh, DNA methylation to see if we can accurately give an estimate about how old somebody is with quite promising results, but also uh, many more applications such as discriminating identical twins, which have identical DNA profiles, so we need something different to differentiate them. And uh, we recently also proposed its use for lifestyle prediction, such as smoking status. Very interesting. What are some challenges in the lab when you're doing that? Um, so forensic epigenetics is uh, quite similar with genetics, but also at the same time quite different because DNA methylation is more a quantitative uh, value. So we have a range from zero to a hundred percent, whereas for SNP or STRs this is much more uh, qualitative because we look for repeat number or SNP variation. So this actually makes our life a bit more difficult in the lab. So we um, we use various technologies to. Uh, to detect in a targeted way the biomarkers we want. Um, but also that makes it harder for statistical evaluation and interpretation and taking also into account various biological factors that might change our DNA methylation profile. Okay. Well, you know, along those lines, you're here at Ishii this year to speak on a panel about what the future holds for forensics. So uh, what do you think the future holds for forensics? Maybe we'll get a little preview here. Yes, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a great honor to, to be part of this panel and uh, talk about the future. Um, I think that the future of forensic DNA analysis is really great and it, um, already we can see that it will be even brighter with the use of new technologies. So we've created a panel to discuss uh, both new biomarkers such as forensic transcriptomics and forensic microbiome, so non-human DNA, and how this can be used for uh, crime scene investigation, but also new technologies such as the genetic genealogy, which we had a workshop and it's kind of one of the hot topics at the moment, uh, but also DNA phenotyping. Uh, what, what do we gain by combining genetics and epigenetics and what can we tell about the person's appearance and face recognition? We are very excited. I think the conversations will be really interesting. It is very interesting how that's all coming together now. So all of the different pieces can form one profile. In a yes, way. yes, sure. Yeah. And uh, with the uh, next generation sequencing and the, the um, great advantages of massively parallel sequence, a lot of fragments, we can actually see this coming in the future where we can have a genetic fingerprint that we can see all these things in one go, hopefully. Talking about next generation, that's been progressing somewhat slowly. So how, what do you see? How is that going to speed up in the future? Is it going to speed up? What's the next step there? Yeah, it's very exciting. It's, um, it's a technology that has been used in genetics research quite recently. Um, and looking back at DNA fingerprinting and DNA profiling, this is going quite fast. Uh, we hope that it will go even faster. Um, yeah, so it's, um, I think it's, its application has already been very uh, promising for various genetic markers and we already have uh, commercial solutions and other tests that researchers have developed that combine the prediction of various traits in one go. Uh, but also, of course, for improving STR profiling and mixture deconvolution, a, a lot more sensitive and reproducible DNA profiling. Yeah, it's so interesting to watch. It's come so far in such yes. a short time, really. Yes, indeed. What, what do you think is the biggest breakthrough you've seen during your career? Hmm, 
Hmm, I, I think this is uh, quite difficult, uh, but definitely um, I think we are all surprised with how much DNA really can tell us about a person and about a scene and about a sample. Um, lately, the genetic genealogy breakthrough was definitely something that uh, showed you how powerful we can be and how powerful those databases can be, but of course also how cautious we have to be before we implement things. And of course in forensic epigenetics, which is uh, more my field, um, I think the biggest uh, challenge, but also the, the biggest um, uh, breakthrough so far has definitely been the age prediction. And now we see that we can quite accurately predict someone's age with maybe plus, minus three, four years in blood, saliva and semen uh, stains. And uh, I can see this uh, uh, getting implemented in casework, uh, probably the first application from this field. That's pretty remarkable. So now, as a scientist, you probably won't like a question like this, but if you were going to predict, what do you think the next big breakthrough might be? Hmm, I, I see breakthroughs a kind of two ways. So one, we have the science and the biology behind it, and I think there um, we will definitely have great um, advan ad advances in fields like face recognition um, or epigenetic applications, uh, but definitely the technological uh, advances uh, are going to be the ones that will wow us. We already see that uh, we can do uh, full genome sequencing from single cells, and. Um, and I wonder how this can affect in the future and how maybe just with one or two cells we can tell so much more that at the moment we are still not as sensitive uh, to, do, to do so. So I think, um, yeah, technology is something that we have to keep up uh, and computers and artificial intelligence. So I can see that coming really, really quickly. I'm excited to see what does come next. Yeah, me too. <laughs> What's next for you? Uh, yeah, so I am already in Rotterdam and at Erasmus Medical Center for almost four years uh, for my postdoctoral research. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, it's a very challenging and um, kind of stimulating environment. So I hope I can continue um, uh, producing innovative research and kind of uh, innovating forensic genetics uh, and DNA profiling. Um, and of course, yeah, I'm very excited to be here to see if we can get more collaborations and, and other people on board. That sounds great. Have you been to Ishi before? Uh, no, actually, this is my first time. Okay, that's uh, exciting. First time at Ishi, and very grateful that I'm on the 30th anniversary as well. First time in California, so I think I will uh, really enjoy myself, and I can't wait to meet more U.S. colleagues um, and uh, yeah, talk about the future and, and science and uh, what do we need to do to make all these great tools uh, kind of forensically applicable. I, I think you'll really enjoy the symposium. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to most? Um, I think the discussions more. Uh, I'm very interested to network and, and talk to people, um, particularly in my, in my field in epigenetics. Uh, uh, is, I feel something is something that maybe it's not uh, fully uh, explored here. So it would really be interesting to, to talk to people about this and feel how um, their view is on, on the topic. It's a really great community. Yes. Yes. I'm very excited. And the party, of course. Yes, <laughs> absolutely the party, too. Yes. <laughs> Anything else about your work that we didn't cover that you want to talk about? Um, I think that we will have the chance to discuss some of it also during the panel discussion. Yes. So um, I'm very excited to, to be part of this EU-funded uh, Horizon 2020 program called Visage, which um, aims to build new tools based on massively parallel sequencing for the prediction of age and appearance and ancestry. And I think this is really exciting. I'm very grateful to be here and share it with, with this with the community. Well, we're so happy you're here. Thank you so Thank much, Athena. So it's really Thanks wonderful talking to you. Thank you.